Hi everyone, I am Dr. Sandeep Vaidya, pediatric orthopedic surgeon. And in this talk, I shall be discussing the utility of the Pirani score in the management of clubfoot in children. The Pirani score is a scoring system which has been developed by Dr. Shafiq Pirani. And it is a score, not a classification, which means that the foot needs to be scored at every visit. And as the foot deformity gets corrected, the score will change over a period of time. It has been validated for the treatment of CTV in infancy. So it would not be proper to apply this score for older children, walking age children. And it has been shown to have excellent intra and inter observer reliability. So before we jump into the specifics of the Pirani score, let us understand what is the need for scoring club foot. So at the outset of treatment, it is necessary to uh, know the severity of the deformity. Then during the course of the treatment, it helps us to monitor the response to treatment. It helps us to make some important treatment decisions like when to move on to the next treatment stage. And in cases where there is resistance or relapse, it helps us to identify these at an earlier stage. So coming to the Pirani score proper, there are six signs in the Pirani score which change as the club foot corrects with Ponsetti treatment. So these consist of three hind foot signs, namely the empty heel, rigid equinus and posterior crease. And three midfoot signs, namely the curved lateral border, the uncovered tailor head and the medial crease. So each sign is assigned a score of either 0 or 0.5 or 1, which means that we can have a total score of 0 in a completely corrected foot to 6 in the completely uncorrected foot. So let's take up each of these signs one by one. Firstly, coming to the midfoot sign, the first midfoot sign is medial crease. And here, if there are multiple fine creases along the medial border of the foot, the score assigned is 0. A single shallow crease is given a score of 0.5 and a single deep crease is given a score of 1. For reference, you can look at your thumb and the fine creases along the thenar eminence, uh, they resemble the creases for score 0 uh, in the Pirani system. The crease of the interphalangeal joint of the thumb with the thumb extended, it would give get a score of 0.5. And the crease of the interphalangeal joint with the thumb flexed, that would get a score of 1. These are clinical pictures of the three grades of uh, uh, medial crease. Uh, coming to the second sign, and that is the curved lateral border. So if the lateral border of the foot is completely straight, the score is 0. Gentle curve gets a score of 0.5 and a boomerang curve gets a score of 1. To study this objectively, you can place a ruler along the lateral border of the heel. And if the ruler is in contact with the lateral border of the foot throughout, then it gets a score of 0. On the other hand, if the forefoot deviates from the scale at the level of the tarsometatarsal joint, then it gets a score of 0.5. And if the foot deviates at yet even proximally, then it gets a score of 1. The third midfoot sign is the uncovered tailor head. To assess the uncovered tailor head sign, palpate the tailor head by first palpating the lateral malleolus and moving your thumb anteriorly to feel the, uh, the uncovered tailor head. With the other hand, hold the forefoot and abduct the foot so that the telonavicular joint is maximally reduced. In the maximally reduced position, assess how much of the tailor head remains palpable. So if the telonavicular joint completely reduces, then the tailor head will completely disappear. And in that case, with the tip of your thumb, you will only be able to palpate the navicular and that gets a score of zero. If there is a partial reduction, then your thumb will be able to palpate both the tailor head and the navicular and that gets a score of 0.5. On the other hand, if the telonavicular joint is completely irreducible, you won't be able to feel the navicular at all. Your thumb will only feel the uncovered tailor head and that gets a score of 1. The next hind foot sign is the empty heel sign and it is done by dorsiflexing the ankle with one hand and with the tip of the index finger of the other hand, you try to feel for the calcaneal tuberosity through the corner of the heel. So if the tuberosity is immediately palpable underneath the skin, that gets a score of 0. For reference, this will be like palpating your forehead. If 
on palpation you can feel a pad of subcute fat but on deeper palpation you are still able to palpate the calcaneal tuberosity that would get a stein, uh, score of 0.5 this would be like palpating the tip of your nose on the other hand if there is a thick pad of subcute uh, fat and you are not able to palpate the tuberosity at all that gets a score of 1 and this would be like palpating the lip the posterior crease sign is somewhat similar to the medial crease. So if there are multiple fine creases, that gets a score of 0. There is a single shallow crease that gets 0.5 and a single deep crease that gets a score of 1. These are clinical photos depicting score 0, 0.5 and 1 for the posterior crease. The last hind foot sign is the rigid equinus sign. And that is done by everting the forefoot and dorsiflexing the ankle passively. And in this position, assess the angle between the fibula and the lateral border of the foot. Remember that this sign should be assessed from the lateral aspect. So if on passive dorsiflexion, you are able to palpate the ankle above neutral, then that gets a score of 0. If you are able to palpate till neutral but not beyond that, it gets a score of 0.5. And if you are not able to uh, dorsiflex to neutral, then that gets a score of 1. So these are examples of uh, the three grades of rigid equinus sign. So Pirani score, as I mentioned earlier, it has been shown to have excellent inter-observer reliability. However, it has been validated only for the age group less than 13 months. So it would not be accurate to apply the Pirani score for walking age children. There are, diff there are other uh, scores which have been devised for walking age children, but I won't go into details of that in this talk. So, as I mentioned earlier, the Pirani score, it needs to be, uh, you know, documented at every visit. And looking at a chart of how the Pirani score is, you know, uh, progressing, it helps us to make important treatment decisions. For example, what should be the timing of your TA tenotomy? So, look at this graph. Here, as you can see, that at the onset of treatment, the Pirani score uh, was 6 with uh, 3 for hind foot and 3 for midfoot. As the treatment progressed, the midfoot score gradually it came down, and by the fifth cast, it had reached zero. However, the hind foot deformity it failed to correct, as can be seen from the hind foot graph. And therefore, at this point, when the midfoot score reaches zero, but the hind foot score is almost you know 2.5. So that is the timing when you should perform a tenotomy. So the tenotomy was performed at this stage. And as you can see, after that, the hind foot score also came down to zero. So the deformity was fully corrected. So uh, the Pirani score graph, it helps us to assess as to what should be the appropriate timing for your tenotomy. It also helps to uh, assess cases where tenotomy is not indicated. For example, in this case, as you can see, the Pirani score, it has dropped from six to zero at the end of five class. The hind foot score has also come down to zero. And therefore, in this case, there is no indication for performing TA tenotomy. It also helps us to identify any problems during the casting phase. For example, as you can see over here, the score dropped from 6. Uh, uh, it progressively decreased till the third cast. But in the fourth cast, as you can see, there was an increase in the Pirani score. And this indicates that there might have been some problem in the previous cast. Like, you know, there might have been some cast slippage or the cast might not have been appropriately applied. Maybe the child was irritable. So this uh, kind of you know blip in the graph should alert the surgeon to potential problems and uh, should alert the surgeon to take uh, remedial steps. It also helps us to identify whether you are possibly dealing with a syndromic foot. For example, as you can see over here, the Pirani score it you know, remained static for a very long period of time. You know, normally at the end of five to six cast, you should see a correction of the, at least the midfoot deformity should come to zero. But in this case, both the hind foot and midfoot deformity have failed to correct. And this may indicate, this may alert the surgeon to the possibility that he may possibly be dealing with either a syndromic club foot or a neuro uh, typical uh, or a neurogenic club foot or a complex atypical club foot. And that should be borne in mind. So to summarize, so score and classification are two different things. Classification determines the type of club foot and the treatment protocol to be followed and the prognosis. Whereas scoring, it helps us to monitor the response to treatment and facilitates treatment decisions. 
Pirani score has been validated only for idiopathic CTV less than 12 months age and it should be recorded at every visit. Thank you.